is the Big O Show. All righty, there he is. The Spose had his on. You, I, I think it's starting to wear down a little bit here. We, we might need oh, yeah. to freshen that up. No, I have a second one, actually. This is the first one. Uh, I bought a second it, it one. Look, it, it looks like a first one. <laughs> you never forget your first one. Um, yeah, no, no. no, and then if I, if, I, if I need to get a third one and a fourth one, I will. Okay, yes. you're gonna. You're, well, you definitely need uh, – a fresher one, that's for sure, because that one. But although, you know what? There's something to be said about the hats that have been worn in. Those are actually, you know. Character. Yeah, no, and comfortable, too. When you slip it on, it just, it's all right. The grooves are there, bro. You know what I mean? Yep. It's, uh, it's great. Especially if you have a Klingon head, it takes a while for it to adjust. And so once it does adjust, you know, you don't really want to switch over if you're a Klingon. So that's going to be a challenge. Uh, yesterday, I got to say, you know, I, uh, I was proud of them, bro. Overall, uh, you're there without your starting corners, your starting tackles, you're on your third quarterback. It was a game for three quarters, bro. And finally the mistakes caught up with a young quarterback that, you know, come on, bro. He wasn't ready for this. I kind of felt bad that he was thrown to the wolves like this. At least he got some experience, but I didn't walk away so bitter like some people out there. I kind of understood, you know, Alan, the five most important positions in football. Quarterback, left tackle, pass rusher, number one wide receiver, and yeah. shut down corner. Mm -hmm. You're missing three of those and double on each of them in two tackles and two corners. And I, I'm sorry, man. I, I, I thought – mcdaniel and company were magicians for three quarters to make it a game so i don't know how you looked at it like like cam yesterday was i thought overly critical of the team so i'm wondering how you viewed what happened yesterday well i view yesterday as the margin for error greatly diminished when you got your rookie seventh round pick thrown into the game after the first play that's number one number two having said that to me, the two biggest missed opportunities for the Dolphins to take the lead in the second half, and who knows mm -hmm. where the game goes from there, were not on Skylar Thompson in the least. One of them, if you recall, after the Dolphins got the fourth down stop, they had the ball at the 45-yard line. Mostert runs for five, so it's second and five, and then the offensive line can't hold off the pass rush on second down where Thompson is, is pressured and has to throw it. And then on third down, he gets sacked because Eichenberg is too slow to pick up a twist up front. And then in the yeah. second one, the one before the Jason Sanders missed field goal, well, Tanner Connor, who the Dolphins like, sorry, son, but you got to catch that pass. And right. that, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Huge, That's the first down at the 30-yard line of the Jets. And who knows where that drive goes from there. And so to me, I look, Skyler's numbers were, were not good. There were times when – He wasn't bad, bro. He was, he was fine, bro. Come on. Are you I, guy? Dude let, me, dude, let me finish my point. I said the numbers weren't good. There were times he was holding the, bat too long, to the ball too long. But let's not forget he had three drop passes, two by Chase Edmonds, which got his ass benched, the one by Connor, and the pick, by the way, his arm was hit when he was throwing to River yeah. Craycraft, which is why the ball floated and Sauce Gardner was able to make the play on it. So, no, yeah. I don't think Skyler was bad at all. Um, for a guy – Thrown in the way he was thrown in, it's actually fine. handled himself pretty well, especially with an offensive line that's pretty leaky once you take Armstead out of the equation. Yeah, no, I, I he was fine, dude. I, I God bless him, bro. He did a good job considering what he is at this point and thrown to the wolves. I mean, think about it. The game starts, second play, you're in. Huh? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy, you know, nobody expects that. So, so, but overall, as a team. Um, I thought it was a pretty good job to make it a game for three quarters. Even when you fell behind, you fought back to make it a game too. on top of all of that. Overall, I thought, I mean, considering everything, I thought they did all right, dude. I can't complain. No, I, I thought they did all right, too. And, again, anybody who looks at the final score, 40-17, and thinks they got blown out, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. They didn't get blown out. And – in the game, for example, against Buffalo, it was a game they easily could have lost. They made the plays. In the game against yes. the Jets yesterday, they didn't make the plays. And it's funny, too, because if you look at the defense, um, what hurt them was Brees Hall running. It wasn't the fact that X wasn't there. The, the, the guys in, the, in his place 
held their own. And the one really bad play on the, by the pass defense was a was nasty good. busted coverage. And it looked like it may have been Eric Rowe who was the one who was responsible for a haul coming out of the backfield. It wasn't one of the corners. So that wasn't a difference in the game. It was just mistakes. And again, because of their lineup limitations, because of all the injuries, their margin for error wasn't as big as it normally would have been. Yep. I'm with you there, man. I, uh, I did not walk away from this. If you can now after the game, uh, the Teron Armstead thing is disturbing. Uh, the fact that he stayed in New York, that's not good. Uh, I don't know how serious it is. Sad part is this acquisition is trending in a really bad direction, unfortunately. Uh, I have, you know, you can't be happy that he can't practice because that doesn't help your team. It doesn't help the line. It doesn't help Eichenberg either. It would help him to have him there and practice every day. And then now he's not really available for all the games either. And so I wonder how long he's going to be out because to me, that's a major concern now because even with the toe injury, he's still way better than anything that you have or can get. So it's a concern. I'd like to have him even at 80% because at 80%, he's still better. But, man, this is just not a good situation. Do we know anything whatsoever? No, we're speaking to McDaniel later this afternoon. Um, I'm not thinking they're going to have anything just yet. Yeah. And but the part that's that's troubling too is – He's played with a toe injury three straight games. So for him to pull himself up out of the game, and, and you, if you saw the replay, he he aggravated the injury on the play where he got called for holding, and he looked at the sideline and it was like, um, right. so yeah, no, that's that's very troubling. And sadly, that's the risk you were taking when you signed the guy because yes. as good a player as he is, that's his injury. Always been. Yep. Yep, always been, always been. All right, uh, what do you – what do you – because he didn't suffer a concussion. And by the way, this new rule is complete bullshit. Because now you're going to cost the team a game, a, a playoff position, something. Because Teddy didn't suffer a concussion yesterday. So why the hell are you holding him out? Correct. If he's not concussed, now you're getting to a point where it's ridiculous. This is a tough This is a tough man's sport, dude. That's just the way it is. They And they know it. They signed up for this. But... The, I, I just think now this rule is, you know, you're you're so worried about the optics now that you're now Bingo. going to start hurting the game and hurting teams and hurting players. Bingo. And and the thing that's completely weird too is this comes as a result of their investigation, which concludes <laughs> that despite the optics, Tua didn't they could not determine that he had a concussion. Okay, so but but then they add that. Ultimately, the results were not what we would hope for. Well, but why isn't it if you determine he didn't have a concussion? Um, so, yeah, to me, it's it's a it's an, an overreaction because of the optics. And then you saw that it not only affected the Dolphin game, you saw that tackle of Tom Brady, um, which was similar to the tackle that knocked out two against Cincinnati. And also because of now the it's a penalty. Situation, now it's and, a penalty. You know, also, you're dealing with Tom Brady, who is invariably going to get the benefit of the doubt. And I know, I know somebody from Tampa put out numbers that he is not getting the, as many calls for him once he moved to Tampa. Well, let's go back to his career in Tampa Bay, where he basically was the protected child. I mean, or maybe I'm saying that because I cover the Dolphins and I'm annoyed by him getting all the calls. But that that was completely egregious and part of it to me. In fact, when the pool reporters were asking Jerome Boger, the referee, uh about the play and why he threw the flag. And then when the, when the question was it, it was there more awareness because of what happened to Tua. No, but they said now it's because he stepped on his hand, but you called it roughing the passer. You didn't call it uh unsportsmanlike conduct because that's what you would, when, when Indomitian Sue stepped on, was it, was it Aaron Rodgers leg ankle or whatever it was when he stepped on it, it was an unsportsmanlike call. Mm -hmm. So the referees now say that the call on Brady wasn't because of the tackle. It's because he stepped on his hand. That's not what the pool report call... said yesterday. No. Yeah. What they go, they go, I, saw, I saw the pool report yesterday. He said because he threw him, viol quote, unquote, I think it was something like he unnecessarily or violently threw him to the ground or whatever. Uh, in other Sean, words, he tackled Sean, him. Pull, Sean, pull it up now. On, on the uh, Sunday Night Football, they stated that it was because of the uh, step on afterwards, not the tackle. I'll try to find it right now. 
Well, look for the pool report also with Jerome Boger. He literally did this. Yeah, is yeah but that's what, that's what I'm saying. They might have changed that now. Is the so thing. You're gonna now tell they... me, are you going to tell me that three hours after the game, Jerome Boger's explanation of, oh, he tackled him too hard now becomes he stepped on his hand? Oh, by the way, and look at the replay also and then notice Mr. Brady kicking uh, toward Grady Jarrett after he was sacked. Right. And tell me that didn't look intentional. And of course, there's no flag there. I mean, no flag, of course. Yeah. It's yeah. egregious, infuriating to no end to anybody who cares about, about football in the NFL. No, but but I, I want to see them pull Brady. I want to see them pull Mahomes now in a game. I want to see them ruin somebody's game now because that's what's going to end up happening. Right. And, and, and listen, I, I, but the danger if now, they, the danger now, big O, is that's a discretion of the spotter. So it's a spotter yesterday, and I'd still love to see a replay where where I see any sign of of Teddy wobbling or anything like that, because I sure as hell didn't see. There was it. none. There was so none. So it's basically the discretion of a spotter upstairs, and to me, any decision that's made by one guy that can eliminate a player from a game that, that that's not a that's not a good way of doing things. No, and you might and you might want to, uh, you know. Uh, headhunt a little bit. You may want to, uh, if you're a, co you might be a dirty coach and you might send somebody to go after a guy and yeah, dude, if you get penalized or whatever, we don't care. But if you make him wobble a little bit, they'll take him out of the game and that's it. So stuff like that could end up happening now, uh, because all of this, and, and I'm sorry, dude, but there are sports. We've talked about this. We had this whole conversation last week. I mean, you're pummeling a guy in the face in the UFC round after round, and when you're giving him a standing eight count, you don't think there's a freaking concussion going on at the same yeah. time oh, yeah. when his eyes are spinning out? How many times have we seen a boxer or, or an MMA guy or woman, and they're kind of dazed and confused, but then they got the, 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 the break for a minute there, and then they come out and they win the fight after that. They, they come back. You know what I'm saying? And, and Tua, in that game against Buffalo, say whatever you want. The guy didn't play in the second half like anything was affecting him. He was playing lights out, and he even threw the kill shot. And on Thursday, he was playing just fine also. Yep. Nothing. It didn't look like he got affected by anything. So, you know, all right, so what happens this week? Because Teddy wasn't concussed. So does he come back? Do they hurry to a back? Because I still think it'll be the Pittsburgh game. But after yesterday, I'm like, I wonder if they'll say, hey, Tua, you feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good. And he passed all the tests. And they're like, well, he's passed all the tests. We got to get him back. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, well, the, the, yeah but when, when you're dealing with a concussion, which we clearly can can acknowledge Tua had in Cincinnati. Um, yeah, for sure. You're, you're, you're going to be very cautious. And you're going you're gonna to err on the side of caution. This idea of, like, we really need him. Gonna, we're going to, you know, wink, wink, rush him back. I, I, don't, I don't buy that for a second. And Bridgewater having not – shown any uh, symptoms and passed all the concussion tests yesterday suggests to me that there's a very, very high likelihood he'll be on the field against the Vikings on Sunday. Yeah, uh, I, I think so too. I think you'll, you'll get to, you'll get to write the Teddy two gloves facing his former team stories, mm -hmm. all the feel good stories. Um, how does Teddy make you feel now as you keep watching him? Right. It just, dude, he had one play. I know, but <laughs> I, I feel I feel about Teddy exactly the same way I felt coming into the game that he would have been just fine, and the offense would have done what it what it did in the first four games of the season or close to it. And unfortunately, and this is I don't know because I because I kind of wrote a little bit about Sally and McDaniel knowing each other so well. Maybe Sally knows that McDaniel loves to play fake and naked bootleg. And lo and behold, on the first play of the game, that's what the Dolphins call, and that so happens the Jets are calling a cornerback blitz. And Gardner got has got a free line straight at Teddy, and basically plays blown up before it even starts. Um, oh so no, I'm not blaming him for the 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 game or the play itself. That that has nothing. Hell, he, it's not even his fault that he was out of the game. That's a stupid okay. rules from the NFL. He should have he should have right. returned and played at the rest of that game. It's just I I still wonder about him running the offense. Uh, on a long-term basis, I'm definitely out. But hopefully on a week like this against his former team. Zero concerns from here. 
Yeah, that I'm hoping he can do a serviceable job against Minnesota. He should be super inspired to play again. Is this the first time he faces them, or did he face them in New Orleans, or I don't think anywhere else he played. Or think... Denver or Carolina. I haven't checked. I I, uh, I don't know. I haven't checked, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. I wonder if he was – because he wasn't in their division again. But, you right. know, maybe in the other stops they played – obviously against Minnesota one way or another, and he ended up playing against Minnesota. I don't, I don't know. I can um, tell you – hold on. I can tell you maybe a crossover game. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, sorry. I'll leave it at that. Not sure. Yeah. Um, all right. What do you think happens with, uh, with, with Tua today? Because I think McDaniel will make – here's here's the prediction I want. Go ahead. Will McDaniel – say he's out for the week right from the get-go will mcdaniel say well you know to his look great he's passed all the tests we're gonna see throughout the week and he uses it as bait for minnesota to prepare or he says we'll see throughout the week but he really is never really gonna play him which one is it my best guess and again going by what we're told and what what we've heard is to us, to us doing well, but he's seeing – then McDaniel told us Friday that he's seeing specialists, which might suggest that it's not – that his return at that time was not imminent. My best guess is he does, does not rule him out today, but certainly doesn't say conclusively that he's going to play on Sunday, that it will, we'll have to see how the week progresses. That's my best – and again, it's just a guess, and, and I want to reiterate that when we're dealing with a head injury – those things can go back and forth very quickly, so that's why I, that's why I, ne I never make predictions when it comes to concussions. The only reason I'm saying that I expect Teddy to play is because he didn't have a concussion. Right, exactly. No, I'm with you there. I think the same thing. I think Teddy plays this week. I think he. I think uh, Tua returns next week against Pittsburgh. All right. One thing I can pick on, okay, because I can only expect for you to do so much without your tackles or without your corners. I think it just changed, and without your number one quarterback, I think it changes the face of a lot of things that you do. But something that's been a consistent problem the entire year so far, and again yesterday, pass rush, bro. Mm -hmm. Pass rush. Mm -hmm. These guys are not getting to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. They can't get there with their base ever. They've always got a blitz. And when you start seeing the guys that are getting sacks are not your defensive ends. You know, now it's your linebackers, your safeties, that kind of stuff. Um, it bothers me. It bothers me that we have not seen Ogba take off. Uh, Jalen Phillips, I know he's young, so there's going to be ups and downs, but he's got to do it. So does Wilkins. So does Raquan Davis. Uh, all these guys, Sealer, uh, Van Ginkle. Uh, you got to, they got to get better at getting after the damn quarterback, dude. Yeah, but if you look at like the guys like Sealer, Wilkins, Davis, and all that, they're they're not pass they're not pass rushers. That's not their mo. No, I know, like, but they've got the to contribute need, at least. They've got to contribute yeah, every once in a while. But the guys you're really counting on are Ogba and Phillips, for example. And the thing with Jalen is, I think a lot of people got fooled last year because he got an eight and a half sacks. And number one, they came in bunches. And number two, and I and I say this with all the love in the world for Phillips, who's a great kid and who's a really, really good athlete, but a lot of his sacks were cleanup sacks last year. And a lot of those came because Agba was a handful for anybody right. to, to, to pass protect against last year. That's not there this year. And right. then you combine that with the fact that they're not doing the all-out blitzing as much as they did last year, and part of it has to be because they don't have the corners they had last year. Well, that's a bad combination. And But, you know, you're right. It's not – it's not getting there, and they're not affecting the quarterback. Forget about sacks. They're not hurrying quarterbacks into picks, which they were very good at, do at doing. Um, you're looking at one interception the entire season, which is which is not good, which is what, I mean, this team thrived on last year. I mean, and not only not only, only one interception in the first game of the season, it was the first drive of the season with the, the Holland pick in the end zone against Mac Jones. That's the only that, – that's it. They've had a couple of those sack strips with Brandon Jones and Javon Holland, but that's not – and they're, they're giving up yards. They need to be – they have been good situ situationally, 
a lot of times so far this season, third and short, yeah, fourth and short. Bending, bending and not breaking, right? Correct. But they, they give up a lot of yardage and they don't have but they don't have that element of taking the ball away like they had the first the last two years. I'm with you there. All right. Um, what do we know about Austin Jackson? Eligible to return from IR this week. Um, and where once I thought that maybe there's a question about him getting his starting job back. Uh, no Greg Little's play has slipped the past couple of weeks, and that's being very kind. Um, yeah, so. but the the bad part is Greg Little will stay in the lineup because they're going to move him over to the other side. I'd be tempted to think they'd start Brandon Shell over him, but that's just me. Oh, okay. All right. No, you think that's my guess. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, I'm, that's fine. If, that, if, that's, if that's the case. Um, did they screw up continuing to play Tyreek Hill? Because when I look at somebody developing a second growing injury, that tells me that you were overcompensating for the other one. So um, how do you look at this Tyreek situation? Because a growing injury, because you end up with growings, that's not, that's kind of a, that's kind of a scary injury right now. And that's something that can linger. So should they have held them back a little bit? Okay, well, unless you know something I don't, his first injury was a quad, uh, and he played through it looked pretty fast to me. And then I thought the, it was the, Waddle with the quad. Waddle, no, Waddle was a groin. Hill was a quad. And then he got stepped on late in the game, which is why he was in a walking boot after the game. And Drew Rosenhaus told Josh Moser of Channel 7 for his weekly segment that he's fine as, with, with, as far as the foot's concerned. So... Um, no, I'm not overly concerned there. And so I, I'm oh, I'm dreaming Xavier that... Howard. Xavier Howard's got the double growing. Correct. Yeah. Oh, well, I didn't say Howard. What did I say? You said Tyree Tyree Hill. Hill. Oh, I'm sorry. Howard, bro. Did they, they didn't play? They didn't play, so they didn't screw up. No. Oh, you mean did they yes. start playing him against Cincinnati? Yes, that's my point. Um, yes. I'm sorry. It's not Tyreek Howard. Did they screw up continuing him to play? Because when you go from one grow into grow ins, it's like, whoa, wait a minute, bro. Yeah. That's scary because I've seen that stuff linger for the entire season. That and hamstrings are really scary. No, no. So, yeah, correct. But right now, sorry. the only problem with that is we're playing results right now. So, um, and that's what I'm we sure do for a living. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure they were monitoring his progress. They were talking to him on a consistent basis. I'm sure they asked him before Cincinnati, can you go um, and all that. And if you're looking to win the game against Cincinnati and you're looking at T Higgins, Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd, I get and, it. You're, and you're thinking, well, X is telling us he can go kind of tough to say, no, no, go ahead and said, we'll hold you. We'll hold you down. I don't know. That's tough. I just hope they didn't ruin him for a while. To grow well, I, know they can, I know they can't catch a break with injuries. It's like, I mean, every no. single thing they, they do goes goes wrong, you know? Dude, they have so many so many issues. Uh, mo the one good thing out of all this bad is the appreciation level for Tua Tunga Vailoa skyrocketed, baby. <clears throat> is that a question or a statement? Well, I know it's the truth. I'm just asking you oh, now. Okay. And? Uh, and they beat the Jets with Bridgewaters in the game, so not so no, and they could have beaten the Bengals as well. So, well, they would have crushed the Bengals and the Jets with Tua. We'll never know. <laughs> what do you got going on on alldolphins.com? I'll be big O, I'll be with you on that one when when Teddy plays one or two full games uninjured and completely flops, then absolutely I'll be on board with you. I'm of the opinion that you will see very little difference in offensive production if Teddy goes through the game uninjured. Obviously, having the, having the same guys that were there early in the season when the Dolphins were producing. I've more. never seen Teddy play like uh, Tua played the first couple of weeks, ever in his career. He don't play like that. So, But whatever. He's, he's, I, I mean, he's, had, he's had moments, but he don't play like that. But. Okay. We shall we shall see what we shall see. Absolutely. And uh Dolphin fans, make sure you bookmark alldolphins.com. It is a must. He'll be back later on in the week. 
to preview the Dolphins and the stinking Vikings. Four and Alan, one Vikings. Thank you for, huh? Four and one the Vikings. One? Yeah, four and one Vikings. I know. Hopefully four and two. There you go. All, said and done. all right, Alan. We shall catch on later in the week, my, my friend. Thank you. You be good. There you go. EJDconstruction.com, Miami Dolphins. Repost. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.